There we go. Better or worse? Oh, way better. Excellent. Oh, okay. God. Tool Hold up. on. No, no, no. You're fine. I'm just having to adjust the uh, the recording here because it's sensitive. No problem. I turned off the air conditioning, but I have some pink Moscato to keep me cool. <laughs> you you are so sensitive. It's all very sensitive. Real men drink pink Moscato. You know who would make fun of you uh, about that? Who? Nobody. Izzy. <laughs> Why would it, would be an offended, it would be an offeminine wine. You know that, right? Like yeah. that's that would be her thing. We were talking about uh, craving sodas earlier, and she was like, "Man, I'm I'm craving a cream soda." I'm like, "Yeah, sometimes I crave a big red." And I don't know if you've ever had big red. The gum? But, the, no, the soda. It's a Texas thing. Okay. Anyway, so I I love big red. Big red is kind of the best, but. She's just like, eh, no, big red, it's too sweet. And I, I remember that we've had this discussion before. She does not have a sweet tooth in that way. She prefers her, her drinks not sweet. Hmm. Yeah, well, I guess I'll, I'll talk to her more about it. There is this uh, craft beer music festival in Annapolis, so, uh, so we're going to hang Anju, I, and Ricky are going to hang out with, uh, with Izzy this weekend. It's going to be fun. Oh, that's nice. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like it's this annual thing. Like She told me about it a few years ago, and I just sort of – Started going in that, and it's one of the few events that's dog friendly. So Anju's all about like bringing Ricky there, and there's beer, so that's another plus. I'll have to reach out the blue team, see if he's free too. He does not drink, however, so I think he'll just be hanging out. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, uh cool. Uh, interesting fact here. I am yes. actually streaming Destiny because the Taken King came out. Or no, no, no. The, pa- the newest patch came out. I can talk about it more on the show proper, but uh, essentially what I'm doing is going through some of the quests that you can get now. And this is like not Taken King stuff. This is just, hey, Destiny works different now. So I've got that up on the stream uh, going right now. Oh, so the update um, changes the way you level up before the uh, Taken King? Oh, yeah. And we can talk well, I mean, about that. Yeah. Yeah, we... we like we've talked about how the new leveling up system, I didn't realize that was going to come out as a patch before the Taken King. So that's interesting. Yes, okay. yes it is. But that's that's what I'm doing right now, and I figure it's mindless enough to where, to where it's just something I can do in the background and it won't really interfere with anything. Yep. Although uh, spawn is broken. I need to go back to Destiny. I haven't played since my wife got here. Actually. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't touched it, and I'm not gonna have the money for the Taken King. I've been I've been playing lots of Evolve and Halo, and uh, I've been playing some Neverwinter because at PAX I got a, a couple of free codes for some stuff. So, and Neverwinter's free, so I'm like, sure, I'll run around in a D and D game and just shoot things. Why not? So I I this is embarrassing. Not too long ago, I was encouraged to pick up uh, Elder Scrolls Online. So I'm okay. like, yeah, sure, why not? It's it's free and and stuff. Well, it's not. No, it's not. I was thinking of Neverwinter. <laughs> <laughs> like no, I... that. That's the thing I had in my mind. So when when uh, when they were like, hey, let's go and play. So I look and I'm like, am I getting the right thing? Because this is like a real game. And nope, it 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 was the right thing. So I'm like, oh okay. And I was trying to think, what was I thinking? Why did I think ESO was free? I was thinking of fucking Neverwinter. That's what I was thinking of. Yep. Yep. Neverwinter is completely free. It's, it's, it's got, um, it, it's got microtransactions. Um, Elder Scrolls definitely is, it's, I've heard it's probably a slightly better game, but yeah, you have to, you have to pay quite a bit and it's got microtransactions. So poopy typing, typing, typing. Sorry. That's me. Curious typing. And I am. Do we have to have another meeting about this, Jack. <laughs> By the way, who is the one who's normally doing this all the time? It's not me. this guy. Thank you. No, normally me. I I'm know. actually posting on Facebook. I'll let him know, like, hey, if you liked our D and D and D panel at RTX, you might want to listen to this one. <laughs> uh, we, we're talking about things and stuff, and things and stuff. And I'm waiting to talk about things and stuff and things and stuff. Well, it is 9 o'clock. So take off your pants. And jacket, yes. Hi, I'm Pantsless Jack. 
Hi, I'm Pantsless Jonathan. And I'm Pantsless Lauren. And together, we are Glib Shark. Whether with pants or without pants, a good listen. Tonight, a look back at the 80s TV series Benson. But, but I first... I used that one before. That, you ben, did. You used it last week. I used Benson last week? Yes. Shit. Okay. All right. The best and worst of Mr. Belvedere. Uh, I think you used that too. <laughs> fine. Those are his go-tos. All right. All right. Fine. Did I use silver spoons, Jonathan? Did I use you silver did not spoons? use silver spoons. You are welcome to use silver spoons. If you're gonna make this a thing, come up with a new one every goddamn week. Fine. <laughs> but first, as always, <laughs> or at least as often as we can, we have the lovely, the talented, the amazing Obo Crazy do a little something called "This Week Thirty Years Ago on Thirty Something." How you doing, Lauren? I'm not doing that at all. No, I may be pantsless and drinking beer, but I'm not doing 30-something. I'm going to do a little bit of DC, and I'm going to do a little bit of Marvel to balance it out so I don't get yelled at. First, Washington, D.C.'s Crime Museum, which opened in 2008. And yes, I do mean D.C., Ah. Uh, close at the end of September, citing, quote-unquote, various circumstances. Now, the museum's star attraction was the VW Beetle that Ted Bundy used to snatch his victims, as well as pants used by John Wayne Gacy to create his clown portraits while on death row. According to a statement released by the Crime Museum, its final day is coming up shortly on September 30th. Quote, We are incredibly disappointed that we were asked to leave our building and did everything possible to try and work with our landlord to stay, but nothing seemed to change our fate. But due to various circumstances with our lease agreement, we really don't have a choice. While we understand the D.C. real estate market is desirable, it doesn't make it easy to digest. People still have weeks left that they can come and see the museum before we close, so they should take advantage, end quote. The press release adds that the museum will continue to host an assassination in the Capitol walking tour with points of interest that include the nearby Ford's Theater, you know, Because the Washington Post, which was critical of the America's Most Wanted Affiliated Museum when it opened, calling it, quote, more fun than annoying, but not by terribly much, points out that the attraction, which charged admission, has difficulty competing with D.C.'s many free Smithsonian outposts and suggested that finances were behind its closure. Uh, Janine Vercelio, the chief operating officer of the museum, said at, at... that said that, as part of the lease, the building owners had the right since 2013 to ask the museum to vacate the property if it does not meet certain sales thresholds. And, yeah, we had our challenges, but we were not making it. So, yeah, if you want to go see serial killer crazy stuff, then definitely go check out the museum before it closes on Dece- uh, September 30th. There's no saying if and where they're going to end up somewhere else. So we'll find out about that soon. Uh, Moving on to happier news, although Red Wolf isn't known to a lot of Marvel fans, and he hasn't had his own comic since the 70s, he's coming back in a fairly big way. Not only has the hero been making his way through Secret Wars, but for the first time in 40 years, he will have his own series with art provided by a Native American artist. Uh, We've actually known that Red Wolf would play some part in the, quote, all new, all different Marvel Universe since the company's first revealed its tr- teaser art for the line-wide shakeup that begins next month. But, you know, it's been a very long time since this hero has had his own book, so it's still a little bit of a surprise. Equally surprising is that the diversity occurring behind the scenes as well. Writer Nathan Edmondson will be joining uh, a gentleman whose name I'm going to butcher, and I'm going to apologize in advance, Dalibor Teljet for the series Art. And he is supported by Jeffrey Vergery, who hails from Port Gamble's, uh, one of the tribes in Washington. So there's going to be hopefully a lot of actually uh, natives behind the, the art and the creation of this comic book. Um, they've actually given design consultation to Red Wolf, providing the writers with insight in native customs and traditions to avoid cultural mishaps. And the article goes on to say, quote, 
there's not a character like Red Wolf out there right now. As a native, I'm really excited to see that he can do things, he can figure out things and stand with Captain America and hold his own in that universe. That's what's awesome about it. You have all these characters of different nationalities and ethnicities, but it's not all about their culture. It's about them being a hero. Marvel is yet to provide Sorry. details on when Red Wolf 1 will actually begin, but you can expect in the next few months as the all-new, all-different reboot is getting underway. Finally, uh, in news that's actually a little more down-to-earth, as in crawling on the ground, Doctors Without Borders is warning that global stocks of a critical snake bike treatment are poised to run out next year, which is troubling and could put tens of thousands of lives at risk. The last batch of one of the world's most effective snake bite treatments, known as Fav Afrique, is set to expire in June 2016. This critical anti-venom safely and effectively neutralizes 10 different snake bites that are common in sub-Saharan Africa. Alternatives do exist, but they're not nearly as effective. Sanofi Pasteur, the French company that used to manufacture the anti-venom, ceased production in 2014, and no replacement product will be available for at least two years, a development that Doctors Without Borders says could lead to, quote, more needless deaths and disabilities, end quote. Sanofi claims that it has been priced out of the market by competitors selling cheaper projects or products and has since switched to making a rabies treatment instead. A spokesperson for the company said the writing had been on the wall for a while now and that, quote, it's very strange that the relevant stakeholders are only realizing this problem five years later, end quote, adding that it offered to transfer all of the anti-venom technology to others, which, you know, for a for-profit company is, is actually pretty nice. Experts are gathering this week in Switzerland in an effort to find a solution. For the moment, User don't get bit channel. by snakes. Just don't, because there might not be any anti-venom. That's all for This Week in Geek. I'm Obo Crazy, and I'm going nowhere near a snake. Nope. 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 The world is indeed a strange place. If you have a fact you want read live and on the air, you can send an email to lauren at obocrazy.com, and if it's a good fact, she'll read it. And while you're at it, go to our website, which is gloomshark.com, full of all of our content. Podcasts mostly, but other stuff every now and again. Other stuff every now and again. Like Destiny streams. Like Destiny. Congratulations, Yay. Jonathan, on your 100th raid. Bravo. Oh, thank Yay. you. Yeah, I, I, got, I started thinking about it when... I got around 80 was when I was really like, okay, this could happen pretty soon. And there were a few weeks where we didn't do any rating, and then there were a few weeks where we did a lot of rating. Especially this last weekend, uh, we actually did some... We took some people through who hadn't done Crota Hard before and Vault of Glass Hard because of the whole Triumphs thing. So... What Destiny is doing is, if you were a year one player, there was a list of triumphs that you needed to accomplish to get a certain banner. And it was a really cool list. It, it listed out everything, and it was sure, things like defeat, uh, defeat the Black Garden, uh, win so many Crucible matches, find these golden chests. Well, some of the harder ones were the Raids and Prison of Elders. And they, namely, they were Skolas, Prison, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Crota Zen Hard and then Vault of Glass Hard. So in the last few weeks, there have been a lot of people trying to get those last triumphs, which just meant lots of raiding. The 100th raid was nothing like that. We three man normal Crota. I started out soloing it. Then after we did some recording, which we will talk about here a little bit later, our good friend, uh, that film guy, uh, Rocket John, joined me. Unexpectedly, I saw bullets flying, and I'm like, wait a minute, what other enemy fires bullets, and why is he firing them at enemies? And I look, and Rocket John had joined me, and I didn't even notice. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then our good friend, uh, crazy boy John Sharp, Hat joined us, and he had never run the sword before on Crota, so we went ahead and gave him some quick sword running lessons, and I, he did really good. He got it on his second or third try. Oh, nice. Yeah, that it was really not cool. easy. Running the no. sword is, is not intuitive in any way, shape, or form. No. And earlier we had had another new friend of mine uh, run the sword, a uh, gentleman named Infernoch. And he went ahead and ran the sword for the first time during a, I think it was a hard mode run. And it, he had a little bit more problems, but he eventually got it done too. 
So it's been a lot of fun. Lots of good reading. I wouldn't have gotten to 100 without uh, my friends. Nice. Aw. A little help from your friends, you know? You got Get By, Get High. It's a new song, right? The one the kids are listening to. It's Bruno Mars' song, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm pretty sure And yet I've, I've been playing Neverwinter, and I've been playing it basically by myself. So I, I feel like I've been doing uh, cooperative games all wrong, and Jonathan is doing them all right. <laughs> yeah, like Forever Alone. <laughs> 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 well, I get plenty of multiplayer time with Evolve and Halo, and there's been a lot of Halo in my life recently as uh, a lot of people are jumping back onto Master Chief Collection to clean up some final achievements before Halo 5 comes out. So I've been, uh, I'm not going to get all the achievements in Master Chief Collection, partially because while it was broken, I kind of got behind on some stuff, mm -hmm. and also because I'm not doing any of the lassos because I have, I, I have a life. And a sure. fiance. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are a lot of people who've been jumping on who want to, you know, run, run some multiplayer and run some campaign stuff and just clean up some other things. So I've been enjoying that a lot. I mean, with all the multiplayer options out there, every now and again, if you have a game that has a thoroughly satisfying, you know, single player campaign, you know, sometimes that's really awesome too. And Neverwinter, for all of its MMO ness, and there is a lot of it, you, I, I have had no problems playing it by myself and thoroughly enjoying myself. Uh, I have participated in a couple of, I guess they would be instances, and where they just auto match you up with some other people. But the the missions are so simplistic and so go here, kill things, go here, kill things. It's not like. Um, playing a Halo match or doing a raid on Destiny and where you need some coordination in order to be successful, just kill things. Just kill and kill and kill and kill and kill things. So, it's pretty easy. If you can kill things, you can be successful at our game. Speaking of killing things and D&D &D in our game, do we want to talk about what we've been doing the last couple of weeks? Sure. Let's I'll, talk. I'll, I'll, I, I'm here to make the announcement. I downloaded Windows 10, and so far, it's pretty good. <laughs> I cannot download Windows 10 because I have a Mac, but uh, Luke has a PC. Maybe he can download Windows 10. Yeah, I, to be honest, though, the only time I ever use my laptop is when I'm doing this show. Like, literally, the rest of the week, it sits in a corner in my apartment, and I'm either on my tablet or my phone. So It, it sits in a corner, like, preparing itself, just get, getting ready for Clip Shark. Like, okay, it's coming. And it's like, I, I've made a habit of turning on this laptop like an hour before I have to, except tonight I actually had an impromptu date night. So, Ooh. yeah, we actually went to get some sushi, and then we had some gelato afterwards. So it's a perfect night, great weather, nothing fancy, but it was really nice. It's like the first time we had to actually go out since she, uh, since she moved here. But, nice. uh, but yeah, like, I'm taking so much tension away from our Dungeons and Dragons and Drunks that that's not even funny. Let's let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah, so we're I know we got this huge reaction in RTX a couple of, like I guess almost a month ago to the day. Yeah. And um, and we all made a decision early early on that we had a lot of fun doing it and we like to do more of it. So let's talk about it. So we have been. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just to to make it pretty simple, the we we've been playing some more. We've been using uh, Roll Twenty and recording ourselves uh, basically in an audio format, and just same people, same mostly the same characters, uh, same DM, new adventure, and hopefully episode one. Uh, I I believe we decided it's not going to be released next week, but we're going to release it on the Glib Shark uh, channel. And it's going to come out as a supplement, but in two weeks, the Glib Shark, the proper episode, will actually be our first episode of Dungeons and Dragons and Drunks. And let me say, after having done this for 10 years, it's nice to stretch some new muscles, like to be able to do something a little different. And it seems like there's an audience for this stuff. I mean, we saw them in Texas, but there's a lot of channels that are dedicated to D&D stuff, and I thought... We're a unique enough group of people, and everyone there is all, we've all been friends for years, so we already have an instant rapport. And we can see each other, which is a little different than what you can typically get from, uh, from Gloob Shark because of the Roll20 and the camera view and stuff. So I can draw random stuff and make weird faces, and you can see people's <laughs> reactions and stuff. And it adds a different level to, to, the, to the broadcast, I think. Yeah, we're going to be releasing it as just an audio podcast, at least at first. We've been fooling around with actually recording the video stream, but uh, sad to say that has been 
slightly more difficult than getting a really good audio going. So, uh, but never fear, we've been, we've basically been using Roll20, which is an absolutely outstanding free uh, online, you just, you need a browser and you log into it. It's completely free and you can run a complete campaign online with people with maps and dungeons and at everything you need. And it's out, absolutely outstanding. We've basically been using it for, for three things. One is tracking initiative, because sometimes that's a little difficult if everybody can't see the initiative. So it makes that a little bit easier. Two, rolling dice, because everyone's had that experience of playing D&D online, and you get a hot streak. You're, you're rolling really well, and people start to wonder, are you really rolling that well, or are you just fudging those rolls? That kind of thing. So this, this takes the the questioning out of everything. So we use roll 20 to actually roll uh, most of the dice. I, I roll a few things off to my side if I, if I need to keep it quiet, but mostly it's, it's out there in the open for everybody to see. It also lets us all react as though you would at the table. So if someone rolls in front of everybody a natural 20, we all get to go, yay. And, and we have had a couple of nat 20 so far. Yeah. And yeah. And the third has been the video. Uh, roll 20 has, a really nice embedded video and audio player so that we can all see each other, we can all uh, emote at each other, we can all see, you know, and while we're going to be doing this as an audio podcast and we're always mindful of telling what's going on, it's good for those of us to be able to see each other. This this feels like I just gave a, a very long commercial for Roll20, but it is kind of awesome and I do thum- wholeheartedly thumbs up it. And it's just fun, like, and it's expanding the group a little bit. You have your Glibshark core, where Lauren, of course, is the DM, and Jonathan is the Magic Muscular, part, part Gandalf, part Power Ranger, pretty much. <laughs> part bro, at the gym, bro. Mm. And then I changed the name of my character. Some of you have seen him as Sterling Mallory, the archer. Um, I went with Travancore. Now, Travancore is a name for, like, archaic name for a part of Southern Kerala, where my family is from. So it's kind of like a nice little nod back home. And it's also kind of like, you know, has the word core at the end. So he's like, oh, he's so Trav and core. And there's Trav in there too. So there's a little nod to my, my good buddy. I thought it was a combination of our friends Travi, Travi Yak and Maddie Core. That, oh, you know what? Maybe so, I think that might be subconsciously why I chose that. I, I think, I, that's what I thought it was. Because so, I don't know my Indian geography, so. Yeah. No, it's just an archaic Indian geography. That, that name hasn't been used in like 50, 60 years. But uh, on a regular basis. It's like calling like Sri Lanka Ceylon. Like Ceylon is like the old name for it. But I come to think of it, I did make Travi a groomsman at my wedding, and I did high five Maddie on the way down. There you go. So the there you go, Travancore. And John is still playing his half orc barbarian from the RTX D and D game. Really, it's only Jules who's changed up her character a little bit. She's still playing a cleric, but she's now playing a gnome cleric which is kind of awesome. And having a gnome and a half-orc in the same party has provided for some excellent excellent, um, visual images of the way that one is using the other basically as a mount. So it'll, it's, it's a ton of fun. And uh, right now it's a custom game that I have created, but we are slowly moving our way towards something a little more uh, officially Wizards of the Coast. So... Yeah. And We're getting it, our way there. And I'm seeing some hints of things. I mean, we did two sessions already, so I'm already picking up on some recurring themes. And I won't reveal them because I don't want to spoil it for our audience, but I'm pretty interested to see how my character evolves because it's the same guy, in my, my, in my view, that I've been playing for all, all of so these sessions, right? Channel. So it's been four sessions, two at RTX, and then two that we've done you know, so far. And my character has gone from being kind of the selfish prick to being someone who's trying to be a little bit better as a result of maybe letting two villages go to hell over something that he may have said and convinced people to do. (laughs) Yeah, if you want to look that episode up, uh, Jonathan was very good about recording, video recording that. And you can look on our YouTube page to see that original D&D game where a lot of these characters were created. But... Um, the, yeah, I, I think it's great that like these characters have propagated from a couple different adventures and now are, are heading off together and it's, it's going to be my job to wrangle you all and to not make my accents sound completely ridiculous. So, because, Car- oh my God. Carly wants to know if there'll be any repeat, uh, NPC performances. 
Uh, any repeat NPCs from previous games? Or I guess. I'll let her yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, it yeah, probably from previous games. I think so. I mean, having played the two games we played already, I mean, it's not just like a one and done thing. In the world that we're in, it's sort of uh, it seems to be one long narrative, not one long narrative, but one consistent narrative. So one if you leave off at one place, extremely long narrative. <laughs> that'll well, will that'll put asses in seats. Yeah, it's not it. It is episodic for the uh, for the moment, as in you could listen beginning to end, and it's a it's a self contained adventure. It's happening right now in the same town. It uh, episode one, I will tell everybody, picks up almost immediately from where the RTX game left off. Yeah. So uh, while none of those NPCs actually show up, what happened in the RTX game, it's explained in a couple of sentences. So it's not like you have to watch that, but you'll it picks up. Right from there. Um, as far as reoccurring NPCs, uh, a couple of them, a bunch of them have just come whole cloth out of my brain. There's a couple of them that have now shown up, and, and I'll be vague about this so that my players don't know what's going on, but a couple of them have shown up who are going to be very important later. Uh, and one of them is actually my current player character for my home game who has shown up to be an instigator for uh, some adventures. So it's, it's a little bit of, of, of a mix of everything, and, but it's mostly new for the moment, but certainly uh, some to not all of these NPCs will be probably reoccurring. I mean, it depends a lot on what the players do. It depends a lot on um, the last episode you guys went basically tavern hopping and I had to come up with a whole bunch of tavern people off the top of my head and if you end up going tavern hopping again you'll probably see those same people I mean although is that really all that much a surprise given the group that you we have here and given that you've known us all for many 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 years everything is a surprise in D&D &D. every that's every time I sit down I mean I joke that whenever I DM that I, I sweat like a like just a water fountain that I, I never am this sweaty after playing the oboe but when you play the oboe you i know exactly what i'm going to do i know what i'm going to play i'm prepared with D, D, I am over prepared in a lot of ways but also very prepared to just make shit up off the top of my head because you guys instead of going in one of the four directions that i thought you might go in have gone in the sixth direction that nobody thought of so and, and i gotta say you don't show it at all i never would have known if you hadn't said that <laughs> That's well for those of you who are listening who wanted to know uh, about tips and tricks for playing being a DM for your for D and D game. That's nothing new. Like I'm not saying anything that's a surprise to anybody. Being a DM is half preparation and half pulling it out of your ass, and half a car, half of a half car. a motorcycle, and or half of some a motorcycle. Such. But I mean, I, so I've talked a lot. Have you guys, without getting into specifics about? Uh, any of the games because, you know, spoilers. Have you guys been having fun? Is there anything that you're craving out of your D&D &D experience? This this is a time to ask the DM. Well, uh, something I want to do a better job of is interacting more with the other characters in my party. I feel like Travancore is kind of doing his own thing a little bit and on his own road, but I like the back and forth that you get between Bernice and, uh, and Carlton Tanks. Or yes. Jonathan and Carlton, you know, and and John, I mean, he plays D and D like you know back as well. He has more experience with it than I do, but I feel like he's kind of stealing every scene that he's in at this point. Which is a good thing because he's like he was going to be a secret weapon of our live of our live show. <laughs> the RP is strong with this one. It's true. It's true. And Jules is just brings a whole different approach to it. I think that she's kind of that right mix of adorable and dangerous. <laughs> Yes, I think that's an accurate way to describe both her and her character. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm trying to like figure out without spoiling too much. I'm trying to build bonds. Like I figure that Travancore and Jonathan the Magic Muscular have been on a few adventures, so there's sort of an unspoken friendship that I want to try and speak to there. Well, good. Yeah. Well, we can definitely work on that. And uh, for those that are interested in listening in, as I said, the first episode is going to drop in two weeks. Uh, it will be the uh, actual Glib Shark episode. Will be episode one of Dungeons and Dragons and Drunks, and then you can expect them. It's uh, we're getting the sense probably once every other week at first, about an hour to an hour and a half for each adventure, and we'll have them as supplemental um, downloads on the Glib Shark feed. And if it 
if it looks like it's getting popular, if we go for a while, then it sounds like we might split it off into its own iTunes account and everything. But for the moment, if you like Glib Shark, this is just more Glib Shark. Absolutely. And I'm excited. I think I think we're having fun. And as long as we're having fun, then we're doing it right. Whether right. whether it turns into a good audio adventure or not is not my concern. Right. It's whether you guys are having fun. And that's always been the barometer for, for whether it's Glib Shark proper or the Buttcast or Dungeons and Dragons and Drunks. I want to have a good time. I'm spending an hour doing this and sitting down and doing... Well, I, I, let's face it. I don't really do anything other than talk and occasionally record audio when needed. But... Uh, but that's a, that's the better. If it's not fun, that's true for anybody. Then there's no point in doing it because if you you're not gonna get rich User doing something that's not fun. Channel. Let me put it that way. And even if you don't get rich, at least you're you have your friends in your ears and in your hearts once a week. And that's kind of that's not a bad way to spend your time. And you get to slaughter rats. And true. you get to uh, pretend to have an awesome which but what is really a horrible Irish accent. Yeah, guys, and that how versatile you are, like in terms of all the different voices you do. I think that's kind of a neat thing that people haven't seen from you yet. I don't think people have seen you DM except for a few people. Well, that's because I'm horrible at voices. I've been trying to expand it a little bit, but I feel like for me, I give it a try and I fail at it, but at least I'm having fun and everybody's laughing at me as I do it. Um, I will say for my home game ones, I had the last time I DM'd, I had a goblin that ended up being an NPC for a little while, and his voice ended up basically being a bad impression of Grover from Sesame Street. That was fun. I mean, isn't Grover basically just a younger version of Yoda? Yeah, kind of. With, with, you better, with, better, si- with better syntax? <laughs> yeah. Near. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, it, he didn't mean to be Grover. I was just kind of looking for a voice that was that sounded like a goblin. And then eventually he turned into Grover. But not but like Grover with a head cold. It oh, man. Bad. I just feel bad for that blue-skinned bald guy who always has Grover as his flight attendant or his waiter or just some <laughs> customer service position where he's getting tortured. I, you know, if there were a t-shirt for that guy, I would wear it. And there probably is somewhere. Yeah, probably. I miss Sesame Street. Yeah, I, I had that cooperation song stuck in my head. Cooperation makes it happen. Cooperation working together. And it's probably a, a spoof of some 80s song that I don't know about. Probably. Or no. Uh- not a fan, because now I, I have the Grover song in my here where he's singing about the difference between near and far, which I could sing, except it's just a lot of, of a tiny little orchestra going do, 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 as he runs away and runs back. And now in the days of 3D TVs, that would actually probably be pretty awesome. Oh, man, Grover in your living room. Reach out and touch fur. As... <laughs> Reach out and touch some monster. Yeah. I was trying to do a Depeche Mode thing, but it kind of fizzled out. But man, oh man, Jonathan, what are you most excited about for this D&D dealie? So far, I, I'm looking to just expand my, my D&D horizons. I like to say that I love my RPGs with a lowercase r. Because let's face it, I, I don't play for the social interaction. I play because I am making this awesome, like... I don't know, a uh, dwarven fighter, and I just need an excuse to have him go chop stuff up. This is a very different D&D experience than I'm used to, so I'm just looking forward to taking advantage and uh, having some fun. Yeah. Good. Gosh. That's all that matters. And and how's your how's your destiny playing going? I'm not... I'm not... Well, okay, so so far I, I'm on the step of the... What they're doing is each subclass now has a little quest that you can do to get a piece of equipment that you can't use yet because it's level 40. I did the one with the gunslinger, and I got what we have dubbed as the cheese cloak because it's got a cheesy-ass emblem on it, and also it's yellow like cheese. Henceforth, the gunslinger cloak is known as the cheese cloak. Thank you, Izzy. So... Uh, now I am doing the warlock portion, and there is a portion in the quest where you have to do something with your super in a strike. So I figured, why not do the nightfall? And so that's what I'm doing right now. My first run with my warlock was not so good. 
They are changing the way that the Nightfall works. Previously, if you if your party wiped, you got booted to orbit. They are changing that in the Taken King. They felt oh. that that was too punishing, and it and it limited the way people played the Nightfall strikes. And it did. You had to play safe. So what they're doing instead is they are doing it where it's like raids where you have a 30-second timer. If you wipe, you then go to the last checkpoint. However, as I just learned from my first Warlock run, that is not the case at the moment. It is still very much the punishing nightfalls that we are all (laughs) used to. And what's messed up is I actually soloed it on my Gunslinger earlier thinking that it was the nice one. Normally, I wouldn't have done that because the Gunslinger is a lot more dangerous to do solo than the than the uh, Blade Dancer, because the Blade Dancer can go invisible. And I, I, I realized, oh, hey, I didn't die through that strike. Oh, neat. Uh, well, I should try it with my Sunsinger. It's a lot easier. No, I died as my Sunsinger, because the thing you have to do is kill things while you're supered. And normally, you use your super to come back from the dead. So, yeah, <laughs> that did not work out very well. Aww. But I, I am trying it again. This run is going a lot better, or at least it was. Dude. Okay. All right. Everything's good. <laughs> at least good. it was as I die. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. And I think I accomplished the thing. I had to kill 20, 20 things while radianced. And I've done that. So now I just have to complete the strike, which should be pretty easy. Nice. Jenga, have you been playing anything recently, or has your days been filled with D&D and, and Wife? It's pretty much all D and D and wife at this point. Although last weekend I helped my sister move, uh, she is now twice as close to me. She used to live out in Lancaster, PA, and now she lives uh, near Exton and Downingtown, which is considerably closer. It's sort of still in, it's it's in, within my television market now. So now she gets the same local broadcast channels that I do. That nice. sounds like made up places. <laughs> well, everything around Philadelphia sounds made up, or like a level of Super Mario Brothers, like Strawberry Mansion, or Nice Town, or Bryn Mawr, or Bryn Athen, or Ardmore. You could actually do a whole like Pokemon rap just based on the the towns are on the main line. line. Ardmore, Haverford, Darburth, Pokemon. There's actually an Ardmore on the way in to uh, to up 35 to Oklahoma City. Oh, I guess it's not so uncommon then. Well, the other one sounded sounded made up. What, uh, Narberth or Bryn Mawr? Yes. Bryn Mawr? Bryn Mawr is like faux, faux Welsh. So when they were building all the towns around here, like around the Pennsylvania Railroad at that time, they decided to pick names that sounded exotic and ethnic, and as about as ethnic as they wanted to get back in that time was Welsh. They're like... <laughs> oh, the Irish. Ex- that seems exotic and occidental. You can't call it oriental because it's actually to the west of England, but it's occidental. The Occident. Where they execute them. That that reminds me something you said at the beginning of that about being in the in the same uh, television TV market. zones. Yeah, yeah. So, and Lancaster, so new stuff is finally coming out, right? I mean, it's I, true. I was just looking up when Agents of Shield is coming back. Yeah, like it's and it's weird. Like, I recently upgraded my cable because you know my wife wanted more channels than the one I had, and uh, I had no problem upgrading it. That's fine. But all I want to watch is reruns of The Office. I don't know why. I'm just on this kick where I'm watching season two now and remembering how funny it was. I've been right. watching on, on Netflix, and we'll get to new stuff here in a bit, but I, I was watching an anime series called Fate Stay Night, which was really good. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. The animation was awesome. The combat was great. The story was compelling. And they only have one season on Netflix. <laughs> there are two seasons. Well, You're killing me, Smalls. Now I might have to go and get me a Crunchyroll subscription oh, to finish which, it out. You know what? There I just go. started watching on Netflix, actually? The Blacklist. And I tell you, man, I'm a big James Spader fan. He hits that sweet spot between creepy and captivating that you just can't stop watching him, man. I could watch him reading the phone book. I'm going to show you something. Aaron. Aaron's. And, you know, and you can just read it and you just listen because it's, it's Spader. He does have that voice. He does uh, have that cadence. One more non sequitur involving Spader, and you actually quoted a line from the thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, Age of Ultron came out on digital today. Ah, yes. I need to look up the blooper reel. I've been dying to see little clips of that have been coming out. I've been dying to see the whole blooper reel. It it was pretty funny. I saw it. uh, Someone had posted the YouTube video of it. And the very first one is Chris Evans doing his Avengers... uh, 
and he just stands there for a moment, and then uh, Scarlett Johansson jumps behind him and goes, I'm a Jersey Civil! <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, it'd be funny if someone like posted something where they replaced all of Ultron's dialogue with Robert California's dialogue from The Office. Like, everything is about sex. Ah, uh, well, now I'm just I'm just gonna have to go watch that as soon as as soon as we're done here. Yeah, I'm excited. Gosh, Age of Ultron. Like, I yeah. funny, I don't own any of the um, the Marvel movies on digital media. Like, I think the last one I bought, and not in the MCU stuff that is, the last like DVD I bought was probably. I mean, I didn't even think I bought one. I got it as a Christmas gift. Was like X Men or, or X Men Origins Wolverine and Spider Man Three in a double whammy of underwhelming. Yeah, I've I've never been one to collect movies or um I mean I collected some music but then I qu- pretty quickly just burned everything onto digital. So it's um even Red versus Blue, even you know the awesomeness that is Red versus Blue, I know I've access to all of those episodes online. Sure. So you know, I haven't been spending the money to buy the DVDs. I sponsor the site. I do have the original DVD box set of the first five seasons, which apparently is now a rare thing because it it only came out for a little while. But most of the time, if I want to see uh, the latest Rooster Teeth content, it's all online. Why Why would I need a giant box set in my living room that I have to then load up into my Xbox or my computer. And because yeah. your friends are featured on some of those, <laughs> those yes. physical media. I think I'm I know, I know. Person. Like we're all featured yeah. on some of those, but I can still watch it online. I can still, you know, call up those the the credits episodes. That's... I think they were still thanking Late Night Jenga Jam two years after we stopped that broadcast. They yeah. have, yeah, they they shored up the credits. We're no longer there. I'm no longer there. Uh, they are actually thanking people that are. More or less involved in the production now. And I think we're under the banner of thank you to the Rooster Teeth community That's now. fair because we had a 10-year run where we were on there like year after year after year. I think that's yeah. a pretty good run. And I have, an, I have an IMDb page for some reason now. Because <laughs> you're thanked in the credits? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it, you know what? I, I totally agree. Um, until we we're able to get all those guys back on the show on a regular basis again, which is going to be hard because they have their own podcast now. Um, I'm totally podcast, okay. Podcasts like multiple. There's like four or five these days. True, but when, when you when you think about the Rooster Teeth podcast, is kind of all the other podcasts have a a topic. The Patch is gaming, and you know they, they've all got very specific things that they want to talk about. Rooster Teeth Podcast is literally, hey, who can we throw onto the couch this week to talk about practically anything? So I think, you know, it's there. we've had less luck having them on our show because they've had their own show. They have their own platform. Although, for a while, fair enough. I was thinking about having them come on and talk about things they ordinarily wouldn't talk about. Like, I guess with, with Jack, it was sports. With Joel, I wanted to have him do, like, a Joel report talking about this crisis. Because I'm reading his Facebook post all the time. It's, it, like, it's, like, full of I told you so about China and stuff. Because Joel <laughs> Heyman, Caboose, super knowledgeable about financial matters and world markets. Who would have thunk it? And then even now... He is an actor. And True. And Rooster Teeth actually is launching. Like, they launched, like, a sports podcast. I think it's called Sports Ball. Yes, it is really funny. <laughs> yeah, I've heard it's excellent. If If I had any vested interest in in any kind of sport i probably would listen to it but i've heard that it is not only funny but you know you you finally get to have like jack on who gets to talk about sports in a meaningful way it's like like five years of pent up like you know (laughs) waiting to come out it's like a sports uh how do i make this safe for consumption sports sports ejaculation that should be our sports podcast Oh, God. Glib Sports, I guess. Quick, trademark that. Quick, speaking someone grab of, the Twitter. Speaking of which, like, I need to still do our, our – I haven't done our league yet. I think the league – the season starts on t- Thursday, doesn't it? Yes, I believe that's when the – yes, I believe the I, – well, I don't know. I know Monday night is getting a doubleheader. So if Monday night is getting the doubleheader, then Thursday is probably getting, like, a double or triple header. I haven't actually checked the – check the deal yet according to nationalfootballleague.com there is a thursday 9 30 game where pittsburgh and new england face off and tom brady's playing because nothing that could says sticks anymore apparently that is oh let's Brief, uh, briefly yeah, briefly okay i thought it was funny that our friend martha thought that 
the, oh, that whole thing was a farce, was completely made up, and it was fiction. And she was floored that it was actually a real thing. Like, federal courts were involved in a sport dispute. Your tax dollars are worked, folks. I, I, I'm kind of with her on this. The whole thing has been absolutely ridiculous. And it is squarely on Roger Goodell for it getting to this point. I read the write-up on uh, ESPN about this where the really the story there goes back to uh, the whole uh, tape gate, spy gate controversy from, uh, from 10 years back. And basically, Goodell kind of rolled over on that and uh, clapped on the wrist. And I think this time Kraft was working the same thing and he didn't get it. There was no quid pro quo or squid pro quo, as it were. And now they're paying the price for it. And I think Goodell's days as commissioner are probably numbered. I hope so. I think he has been... For for a period of time where the NFL has enjoyed some pretty good success, it is not due to Roger Goodell. He's uh, he's the jarish in you of NFL commissioners. Good for peacetime, but when there is trouble, you need a, a an Admiral Latham there. Or maybe not Admiral Latham. He's a bad example because he was kind of a dictator or a wannabe. But you know it what I'm at, saying. It is at this point as a, a Seattle native and someone who is rooting for the Seahawks, that I would like to recuse myself from this entire conversation for fear that I might be biased. The preceding... No, that's fine. That's fine. The preceding has been a presentation of Glib Sports, I guess. Glib Sports. <laughs> that's I, I like that even better than the last one. Sports ejaculation. It's been kind of my unofficial name for any time we do anything sports-related. I almost wanted to do, like, a spin-off, like, sports podcast, but... Uh, but I feel like anytime we do an idea, like we we probably pick it up or even talk about it, Rooster Teeth goes and does it, bam, just like I that. Do, I do. Rooster Teeth like, did it. Yeah, right. I do like that they went ahead and just picked up the sports ball name and are literally running with it, even though that has become kind of a farcical, almost derogatory name uh, that geeks have used, which I've I've never really liked. I, I always feel like. You know, geeks are at the point in where we They're don't want to on start. The jocks. Yeah, we don't want to be making fun of anybody. We were in that position, and you know what? The people who are totally into sports have every right to be. And if they're having fun, then why not? And so but I, it's I, perfect. It's like us co-opting like a slur or whatever. That's it's our, like Obama. That's our word. That's our word now. <laughs> it's like, like Obama going, "Yep, Obamacare. We're calling it that." And then you get that piece of the Venn diagram that where you know someone is a nerd, but also. Like, into sports. Like, Jonathan is in that camp. I'm in that camp. I am when the Seahawks are in the Super Bowl. Fair enough. Well, it's just been a lot lately, to be fair. Every Super Bowl I watch, my wife has featured the Seahawks. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I, I am admittedly a Fairweather fan. I don't watch the games. I just root for the team because they are my home team. And, and I love the fact that I finally live in a city where they are doing well. And I love that everyone else outside of this market perceives the head coach of the Eagles as insane or just nuts, and no, no one can predict what he's doing. It's just so entertaining. Like I'm not. I mean, when the Eagles were good, I would fall asleep in games ten years ago when we were winning games. But now it's like I don't know what the hell is going on. Chip's insane, and I kind of love every minute of it. It's. It, I'm not bored. Let me put it that way. And isn't that really all you want out of a sports? Like, to be excited, to not know what's coming next, to feel like you're on a roller coaster ride? It's a thrill. It, it takes you out of sight of your life a little bit. Well, that's, that's the whole thing about uh, why I think some people have problems with what is done in New England is because it is totally against the spirit of sports. It is. Cheating. It well, is, is the ult yeah, the, it, cheating is the ultimate slap in the face for sports because the magic of sports is, you, like you said, you don't know what's going to happen. So I, I, I get why people are, are down on, on Brady and the, and the Patriots, and, uh, and they, they deserve it. They really do. At the same time, it shouldn't have gotten to this level. It really shouldn't have. It should have been settled by the NFL – on its own, just without any federal court involvement at all. The fact that it went that far is absolutely ridiculous. And it's, again, our federal courts being tied up with this when there are actual important things to rule on. Just as a citizen, that kind of pisses me off. Yeah. 
Yep, that I think we can all agree on. I mean, we can raise one point eight billion dollars of you know government money or whatever for a stadium, but we can't like fix our public schools or have roads that don't have potholes in them. All right, getting down from my high horse now. The preceding has been a presentation of <laughs> of the Glib Report, or yeah. That's I like, like the Glib Report. That's a whole other podcast. That's I, I be, love the Glib Report. I that's really do. gonna be me like riffing on just. I'm gonna do a whole episode about gerrymandering. And I'm going to go full. All that out. episode is like 10 years in the making. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's all I ever talk about. The politics is like, yeah, sure. Our, it's an interesting system we have in Pennsylvania. Our representatives vote for us. And they build their own district out of like Legos, like or people-shaped Legos or whatever. Anyway. Yeah, we're, we're eventually just going to have an entire episode where we let you go off on gerrymandering because I, I, I probably totally agree with everything you, you're about to say when, when we have an entire episode. And there are quite a few really good, um, I think John Oliver has talked about it and there's a few YouTube videos that I've watched about it that are quite excellent that really explain the, pro- the, the problem in detail and why it continues to be so systematic in our, in our system. Yeah. But, oh, God, it's ridiculous. And it's, it's one of those things that you don't think about until after it's already happened to you. Yeah, you just need to make me prime minister. Like, just make a new position <laughs> just for me. And I will change our national anthem from the Spar- Star Spangled Banner-, Banner to the theme from Mega Man 3. Do, no, that's hard do, to do, say. Do, do, no, 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 you go do, back to do, America the Beautiful. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 Okay. I would change it to... The theme from HBO's Hard Knocks. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so it, last night... Actually, I, I almost... It almost sounds like Reigns of Casimir now that I think about yeah. it. Yeah. Or do, that's do, what do, it's going to be the Reigns of Casimir. Sorry. From, from Sanford and Son. That's a catchy one. <laughs> so last night we were watching a whole bunch of stuff on HBO Go. Uh, I watched a couple episodes of The Wire, which I'd never seen, uh, even though Itchis Elba is just amazing, and I love that man. And as much as I didn't really get into the show, um, it reminded me that there's one thing that HBO is consistently good at, and that is opening title theme music. All of the, the all of the opening title sequences for all of their shows are outstanding and unique and have great music and are just absolutely fantastic. And I feel like I want to spend a night just going through every single HBO original show that I've never seen and just watch their opening sequence because they're all fantastic. Oh man, Carnival's was so good. Oh yeah, Car- well that whole series was and that's still one of the few times that I'm upset at HBO for canceling it in the second season because that was so uncharacteristically, it was so uncharacteristic for them. I mean, they did cancel cut Roma. Off the show. They did cut off Roma for two seasons, but Roma was crazy expensive to film. It wasn't. There was a lot of other things going on. The the problem with Carnival was they had promised an, at least one more season, so the writers didn't wrap things up at the end of the second season, and then you're left with that ending. Ugh. Uh, yeah, I know. But I read that apparently, like, the Knopf brothers actually kind of revealed what they would have done. I think this yeah. was a year or two years ago, and I read it, and it seemed pretty satisfactory, and it kind of made sense, given all the stuff that they were building towards. Yeah. But we did watch last night a HBO original documentary about Scientology, which was quite interesting. And I know there's a lot of different stuff out there. It's not sensationalized. It's a, it's a very... Um, it's almost a academic account of what went on with a lot of interviews with some of the, the top members of Scientology who eventually left. And yeah, they do deal, deal with Travolta and they do deal with Tom Cruise. But it's, it's, a, very, um, it's a very interesting look. Like, I, I thought I knew a little bit about that thing, about Dianetics and Scientology, and there was a, a bunch in there that I had no clue about, especially about L. Ron Hubbard. So if you're all interested in kind of the, the, the mechanics of how that all came about and what was really going on to lead to this mega phenomenon of Scientology, definitely watch. Um, I don't remember what it was called, but if you are, have HBO and you look up Scientology, I'm sure it's one of the few things you'll find. I think I've seen it. That's the one where the dude, they're all just like, all their offices are just like sailors. And the guy I took over from Elrond Hover was this really 80s looking guy. I think. Well, yeah. I, well, every documentary. David see, something? Yeah, but. He had a um, he had a whole 
group of a core of people who were um their his C core. Oh, that David, literally... David Miscavige, that was his name. Yeah, but like L. Ron Hubbard had created all these people and like because he was dodging taxes and so he thought he could dodge before before Scientology was a religion, he thought he could dodge paying taxes by putting everybody on boats and sending them out into international waters and yeah. like some of the crazy stuff that it, it's just it's just amazing to watch if you're at all interested it is a really well done documentary like most hbo yeah. stuff is i you know i like that the hbo did recently um seven days of hell which is like the tennis game the fake tennis game between um andy sandberg playing like the adopted williams brother like Venus and Serena, and I think uh, Kit Harrington, uh, Jon Snow, playing this kind of dim-witted English like uh, tennis player. It was just incredible. I just loved how it, it, it scratched that stupid itch, you know, the stepbrothers itch, you know. And I just, it was just amazing. And Lena Dunham played like this '80s like Jordache jeans executive, which I thought was just perfect casting. The further I get, the the older I get, I guess I should say, the more I look to the internet for my regular TV watching in a way, you know, whether it's like some of the D and D stuff I watch like critical role or whether it's the rooster teeth stuff. Um, and then every once in a while, like game of Thrones and, um, agents of shield, but I'm watching that on their apps or on their, on their website. And the more, if I'm actually going to sit down and watch something on the TV, I go for documentaries. I go for, you know, one subject documentary things about something that I go, oh, that sounds interesting. Let's let's see about that. Yeah, I've kind of lost. I mean, no, it's not true. I, whenever there's something on PBS, like they did the recent one on the Roosevelts that I like, the one on national parks, and apparently Bank of America is um, renovating, like funding a uh, a sort of like a re what's it called again where they fix it up like. Uh, a refurbishing, revitalization of the Civil War documentary. They're actually going and cleaning up, making it all HD and stuff like that. I think 20 years after it originally came out. So I'm looking forward to one. Oh, the Ken that. Burns one? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. And this Ken Burns' the Civil War is definitely one of those documentaries that inspires my longtime goal of kicking, uh, baking a cake where gummy bears and Teddy Grahams reenact the Battle of Antietam. <laughs> I think that's the front runner for what I want to do for my next birthday. I think I want to just invite a bunch of friends over and make this cake finally. Mm, well, there you go. Yeah. It, it, it will be full of sugar and delicious and probably give someone diabetes, but it will be awesome. That's worth it. I found that the, the current leader of the Church of Scientology is from my neck of the woods. Born in Bucks County, raised in South Jersey, went to high school in the county that I live in now. This is kind of messed up. He is kind of messed up. Like, well, is he you? He's not me. I'm <laughs> not David Miscavige. Um, I'm about 22 years younger than this guy. And and Fifty Shades Darker. That's true. He is he is a a white white dude with super white teeth, and he's crazy. Like L. Ron Hubbard at after the documentary about Scientology, I came away feeling like, for all the craziness that Scientology is, and for all the stupid shit that L. Ron Hubbard did, I never got the sense that he was trying to scam anyone that he really believed everything that he was putting out there. David Miscavige, I think, is just evil. And this is, of course, my opinion from watching a documentary about him. What the, do I know? The views of Lauren Obocrazy Urban do not necessarily reflect those of Glibishard, except in this case, they do. <laughs> not always, but, but this time, they're, I think they're lined up. Our, our corporate ethos probably reflects this point very, very... But man, Scientology, like, they, they get enough press. I don't think they need our, our buzz. Let's stop buzz marketing. True. Let's stop buzz marketing no, Scientology. fuck those guys. Yeah, we, we don't need to be. We can talk about how terrible they are and how, if there is a hell, Miss Cabbage, I'm sure yeah. you'll care. Yeah, Scientology, let's lump into the same um, basket as Donald Trump, as things that we talk about once and then try not to ever talk about again. Yeah, but let's... definitely go see the documentary because the documentary was excellent. Absolutely. And now that home box office is kind of cutting the cable from, with, with cable, so to speak, it's interesting to see which way they'll go and which, how many other people do. I know WWE Network does that. And MLB, I think you can get just on, on, as an online option now. Uh, Comedy Central, you can practically watch everything they put out as long as you're willing to wait a day. That's true. Like, even 
I haven't seen a single. I think I've only seen the first episode of another period, which is sort of like this period piece um, version of like. I guess best way to describe it is like Downton Abbey meets Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> it's that's exact, and it stars uh, Natasha Leggero and Ricky Lindholm, who you may know as Garfunkel from Garfunkel and Oates, or was she Oates? She's the blonde. I think the blonde is Garfunkel, right? No, they're not there. With Garfunkel and Oates, it's just the name of the band. They're right, right. They're, I know. they're not, not, no, they're not Garfunkel and Oates. Okay, like. Ricky from Garfunkel and Oates is playing this kind of ditzy, uh, you know, heiress kind of character, and Natasha Leggero plays her brainier sister. Not brainier. It's too bad it's not Garfunkel from Simon and Garfunkel. And because sort of that'd a, be amazing. And it's sort of an all-star cast. It stars uh, Michael Ian Black as like the Carson, like kind of head butler character, and then. What's her face? Um, from from uh, uh, what's uh, Christina Hendricks plays a maid who's renamed Chair because that's what's expected because basically servants in that era are no better than chattel. And I think what's his face? David Kettner plays like the uh, the patriarch of the family, and then the matriarch is played by Paget Brewster of uh, of Community fame and a few other things. And it's all it all comes together very nicely, and it's sort of like the next logical step after Drunk History. Well, I'll definitely have to check it out. Yeah. Positivity. Oh, but yeah, and then the whole like, do you guys see the uh, the Key and Peele like sketch where they're playing uh, Big Boy and Andre Three Thousand from Outcast? No. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. So of course, you know, Big Boy's grounded, kind of down to earth, sort of normal, and then Andre Three Thousand is a space cadet. No, the most recent thing I saw was them making fun of Neil deGrasse Tyson for being Neil deGrasse Tyson and the Cosmos. <laughs> Which is very gentle ribbing, but was it was very funny. Okay. Basically, he could he could talk you out of anything. So you like, can. yeah, it was really funny. You know, it's yeah. funny. Like Key and Peel have been around a lot longer than Chappelle Show, right? So I think maybe their legacy. But you think of Chappelle Show? Something they still talk about like ten years after it's on the air. I think the Chappelle Show, in a lot of ways, did a lot of things on network television that people didn't think could be done yet, especially when it came to race. So it, it for its short run, it was a shooting star. Gotcha. So I got it. So Chappelle Show is like Nirvana, and then Key and Peele are like the Foo Fighters. I sure. would not go there, but if you want to, that's okay. I uh, I've gone there. That is a Glib Shark exclusive there for you folks. <laughs> so what are we doing next week? Because in two weeks we're gonna have a D and D game. I think we should talk about some more Fall TV. I I like this plan. I love how we were supposed to got, talk about Fall TV and never actually did it because we got distracted. That that's us. That's Glib Shark, and that's our show. So many tangents, so little time. Hey, our sound producer is Jonathan Tangent King Cerna. Oh, God! I need to run away because I have a 10,000 experience buddy and I'm going to die. Our, uh, <laughs> our announcer is the inimitable voice actor Bob Ball. Our music is done by Linnea Boyev. And on behalf of Lauren, Jonathan, and the entire Glib Shark staff. Oh, this... oh, oh, I, I have a plug. I have a plug speaking of music. Plug away. Plug away. Go buy Trocadero's. A, a Red vs. Blue Season 13 soundtrack. It's doing yes. very well on iTunes, and you should totally go and buy it. I have bought a copy. It is fantastic. I had feels, and you should buy it too. It is on my Amazon wish list. Somebody buy it for me, please. We, we love us some Chocadero here at Club Shark. So on behalf of Lauren, Jonathan, and the entire Club Shark staff, this is Jack Adathil saying good night, good health, and report to the goof troop. ba da ba da ba ba doo bop Yeah. I love you so much. Thank you. I wanted to do Even it. if I don't understand you. Oh, man. <laughs> Goof Troop, that was on like 20 years oh, no. ago. I know. I just... I never of course it was. Of course it fucking was. I just All been right. thinking about Goof Troop a lot lately. Oh, so I need to work that one in. All right. I've got to go because Lucas made dinner and I'm starving. All right. Go eat. Thanks for All streamers. Right. Thanks for listening. Gentlemen, see you later. Bye. Oh, I'm not. I'm not done streaming. I'm. I'm gonna keep going. Actually, oh. I'm not. I'm probably gonna. I'm probably gonna call it here. It's about I, to say, I'm. I'm. In, I. I lost the uh, rock paper scissors game, so I'm broadcasting from my bedroom. So I'm thinking my wife might go to sleep pretty soon. Okay. Yeah. I'll. Uh, 
I guess I'll shut down the stream here. People have just been watching me kind of screw around. They did watch me fail and then succeed at a nightfall, so I, I don't know that you could ask for much more than that. Nah, they got their money's worth, especially since we broadcast for free. All right. Night, Jonathan. See ya.